In this video, I'm going to be covering what are Pantone color swatches, and I'll also be showing you how to use them in major Adobe programs like InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop, because those programs do include all the different Pantone swatches built in in a very easy to reference way. So it can be a bit helpful to know how to access those libraries and then use them in your designs moving forward. But first up, what are Pantone colors? And essentially Pantone is a company that has become a company all about color and more specifically defining color. So Pantone's job is in essence to create really high quality printed books of colors. So if I go to the website here, click on shop and let's go on graphic designers, which will be the main focus of this. There are two major color systems that graphic designers designers use the most, and that's called solid coded and then solid uncoded. So I'm just going to the Pantone matching system or PMS colors. And once I click on that and this loads up, it brings up a bunch of different options for these different solutions for colors. So here we have solid coded and uncoded and then color bridge coded and uncoded. And the major thing here with the solid coded and uncoded and coded and uncoded color bridge is if I bring up these pages right here, the solid coded and uncoded is sort of the most basic reference for colors that just defines different colors. So this yellow for example, is 2003C, where the number references essentially what the color is, and then C stands for coded. And for reference, when they say coded or uncoded, it's talking about the paper that the ink will be printed on. So coded is, for example, on a glossy piece of paper where there is a clear coating on top of it, where uncoated is a much more typical piece of paper that you might run through your everyday printer or other pieces of paper, like let's say a cardboard box where there isn't gonna be a strong coating on it. And that's what these two different things are referencing in those cases. So just in general, coated colors or C colors tend to be much more vibrant in color and saturation because the coating helps that show through where uncoated colors tend to look a little bit more dull because the dull paper itself, it doesn't have any sort of a gloss or a sheen on it makes those colors look a little bit more subdued in comparison to the coded colors. So the main difference between the solid coded and uncoded and then the color bridge coded and uncoded is that in color bridge here, it offers a few different options, including RGB values for those colors. So this is 3242C on this light blue right here, but then it gives you the RGB value as well as it calls it an HTML, which is actually just the hex code that you could then put into a program like Illustrator or Photoshop and easily reference exactly what this color should look like. And also here there are the CMYK color codes, so it tells you what formula the ink will have to use in order to achieve this specific color, where on the normal solid coded and uncoded, it does give you mixing values for Four different basic colors and this is really aimed at people like let's say a screen printer who has these specific inks like Pantone yellow, Pantone orange and I can't quite read this one below it but it tells you the values in which you need to measure out these different inks and mix them in order to achieve these colors and when I reference screen printing, screen printing is an absolutely major part of the industry that uses Pantone colors because it's very important for the printer to know exactly what color they're trying to match to because the biggest thing about Pantone colors is that it's designed that each person on both sides of the screen. So if you're a designer, you're looking and referencing at an actual printed book, just like these right here, that shows out all these colors because you're not supposed to be trusting the colors that you see on your screen. You're supposed to be noting what colors are used in this book based on which one you want to use and then referencing that specific color. And then the person who is printing the actual item will also own a book just like this. And when they actually mix the inks or verify that their printers are properly printing out the colors you requested, they'll be looking at the book and not at their computer screen where the file is that you sent them that will let them know that that color is exactly what it should be or in some cases exactly what it should not be and as you can tell here these books are fairly expensive so if you're a newer designer that is something to kind of keep note of that pantone books are not cheap to get your hands on so this one's 145 for both the solid coated and solid uncoated which is two separate books and the color bridge is even more expensive because it does offer more options and this one's 239 and also note on this color bridge example it does show a cmyk color approximations on the right side, which can be a little bit of a useful thing if you're using CMYK printing quite a bit. And just as a side note here on Amazon, they also offer the solid coated and uncoated books for 132, which is a slight discount over 145. And I'm sure you can find even better deals out there if you're looking for a better deal on these books. But be careful if you're buying really used books because these do fade over time, they get well worn, and then the colors aren't as accurate as they should be. So sometimes you'll find them really cheap on 
somewhere like eBay or a site like eBay because someone's used it until it's become basically too faded to be super accurate for them anymore. And then they decide just to sell it, even though the book might not be in the best condition. So that's why buying new or lightly used for these is definitely the best thing to do. But hopefully that gives you a basic idea of what Pantone is. Basically, it's just a system designed to help make sure that no matter what you see on your screen and no matter what the other person who's printing the goods sees on their screen, because screen colors vary a whole bunch, even if you buy two monitors that are exactly the same, same brand, same everything, the odds are the colors will look a little bit different unless you're buying a super expensive color calibrated monitor that is designed to effectively reduce that problem as much as possible. But color variance is a thing that's just going to happen and it's something we have to accept. And Pantone is a great solution to prevent that. And there are other systems out there that effectively do what Pantone does, but honestly, I've never used a printer that did not default to Pantone. They seem to have a bit of a color monopoly. So just keep that in mind when picking a color system, because at least at this point in time, Pantone is definitely by far the most dominant person out there doing it. So now I'm going to show you very quickly how to bring these colors up inside Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign in case you want to do that, because it is so easy and it's a nice way to reference colors very quickly. So inside Illustrator here, I'm going to go to Window, and then I'm going to go to Swatches, which is sort of near the bottom here, and I'm going to click that. And here is my swatches window, which I'll just make a little bit bigger here. And up in the upper right hand corner, there's a drop down menu that looks like a down arrow with, I think it's four lines. Just click that. And then you want to go to open swatch library sort of near the bottom. And there are a ton of different color libraries built into Illustrator, but we want to go to color books because the Pantone books are essentially color books. And as you can see here near the bottom, there are all the different Pantone systems. The main ones, like I said before, will be Pantone plus solid coded and Pantone plus solid uncoded. So I'm just going to select solid coded right here so I can bring up a new window, which is right here on my screen. I'll just move these over very quickly and then expand this a bit so you can see how many colors are in here. So as you can tell, there are a ton of colors to pick from. And basically what you want to do is just pick one that you think looks relatively approximate to what you want to achieve. But also it's very important that you do own a Pantone book if you're referencing Pantone colors, because for example, I'll just pick this one, which is 7574C, and I'll draw a box on my screen right here so you can see that this is roughly a brown color. Now, if you, for example, owned a Pantone book and you held that Pantone book for this color, on your screen, which is 7574C, the odds are what you see on your screen and what you see in your book will be quite a bit different. So I see a lot of newer designers making the mistake of really trusting these built-in colors as being super accurate. Do not do that because in most cases, at least in my experience, they most certainly are not. Unless once again, you have a monitor that's been very specifically calibrated to be super accurate with these Pantone colors. So in general, when designing, I just pick the colors that I think look the best on the screen. I kind of ignore the Pantone color book. And then once I'm done with the design, I'll hold the book up to my screen, try to find a color that matches it most quickly, write down that number, and then reference these Pantone colors later on. If I'm sending this to a printer who wants me to use actual Pantone swatches, and it's just best practice to talk to a printer before you send whatever you're doing out to them to ask them how do they want to handle the Pantone colors? Because sometimes, like let's say I'm drawing a shape and I just want to make my own color that's brown, but let's say I make it my own brown right here and I don't want to use the Pantone colors, but they specifically ask for Pantone swatches to be used in the design instead of just random colors. So that's when I would go to my Pantone book hold that up to my screen, look at this brown right here and pick a color in the Pantone library right here. So I'm just going to pick this brown right here, in which case now if I go to my main swatches menu right here, you can see that this is Pantone 7573C, which some printers are smart enough to pick up on and properly print the color if they've been calibrated to print Pantone colors. And also some artists or color separators, especially in something like screen printing, will actually look at this swatches menu and reference the exact Pantone chip that was called out if it wasn't specifically noted anywhere else. Otherwise, if you don't reference anything, they're just gonna have to use their best judgment of what they think the colors look like. And in my experience, that doesn't turn out too well for you. So it's always good to at least note somewhere what Pantone colors you're referencing or use the specific Pantone colors once you've completed your design. And also something cool about Illustrator, like if I type 127 right here, it does a search for you automatically that brings up this Pantone 127C color, which is a yellow. So if you're looking for a color based on your book and you don't wanna sift through this absolutely massive group 
grouping of swatches, you can type in something like 169 and you get a pink color. So as soon as you know the colors, it's very easy to find them in this swatch view by just using this little search bar. Next up is Photoshop. The interface isn't quite as good in Photoshop for doing this, but it still certainly does work. So you want to go to window and then swatches just like in Illustrator, which brings up this huge color swatch window right here. And if you click this little menu in the upper right hand corner, it looks like four lines. You can then also pick a different color books here as well. So I'm going to do solid uncoded this time. And it's going to say, do you want to append this, which is basically add them to your existing list of swatches or just replace by hitting OK. So I'm going to hit OK and replace. So as you can tell, it desaturated these a little bit since these are uncoded. But just like the other thing, if you hover over these, it will tell you the color. So this one's 7581U, where U stands for uncoded. And then if you pick one of these, it'll automatically bring that to your fill, which is right here on my screen. So if I hit Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and then Backspace, it'll go ahead and fill this color in. So that is another way to reference Pantone colors. The only downside of using Photoshop is that it doesn't have that really handy search bar like Illustrator does. And for whatever reason, I kind of just prefer the swatch menu inside Illustrator. Now in InDesign, this is a little bit different because the path to get here is a little bit different. So you want to go to Window and then actually Color. And from Color, you want to make sure that Swatches is selected. So Window, Color, and then Swatches which will bring up this window right here, which is the swatches menu. And this one's also a bit different because it doesn't let you just pick a color library. You can select load swatches if you've downloaded a swatch library somewhere and you want to access that. So to add a color in InDesign into your swatch menu right here, you want to click this drop down up the top right and then go to new color swatch which will bring up this little window right here. And under color mode, where it says CMYK on my screen, I'm gonna hit the drop down, And then you can also see that this has the Pantone libraries built in. So I'm gonna select Pantone plus solid coded, which will bring up this menu where I can go ahead and sort through this and pick the color as desired. Just like the other ones though, I can just type in a number like 137, which will bring that up to the top here. And if I hit OK, you can tell that it adds that Pantone color swatch into my swatches menu. So then if I draw something like a box right here, I can go ahead and apply that by just clicking on that swatch in my swatch menu. So it's really easy to go in there and do that. But once again, it's pretty useful if you have an idea beforehand what color swatches you wanna pick out and use because that'll save you a bit of time rather than just scrolling down this big list of Pantone colors. But that about covers it for this. It's actually quite simple. But like I said before, when I'm designing something most of the time, I'm actually designing just picking, so like let's say I just wanna make a blue box. I'm just usually going to my fill color here, picking a blue color that I like and make sure that you know it's pretty set to what I want. And once I have a complete design done, so let's say I'd have another box here that will be a slightly darker blue. So I just did that really fast. So I won't even worry about picking the Pantone colors from the swatches menu until I already had all my colors on my screen ready to go. And that's when I would use a Pantone color book and actually just hold it up to my screen, try to pick the most appropriate colors based on what I see here, maybe save a new file. And then I would go through here and actually convert these colors over to Pantone colors. And it's also worth noting that if the work will always be digital, like 100% digital, never be printed, there's no reason to worry about Pantones whatsoever because it's just what you see on your screen is what the person's going to get. And that color variance there is completely unavoidable. But basically anything that will be printed and you want to make sure is absolutely color accurate, you're going to want to use Pantone colors to make sure that the printer is properly printing the right color for what you have picked out because you'll both be referencing a book that's been printed to very high standards to be the exact same rather than screens that'll vary a whole bunch when it comes to something like color. But that was a bit of a long video on this, but I hope it was thorough enough to really give you a good idea of what Pantone colors are and how to use them and when to use them. So I do hope you found this helpful. And if you did find it helpful, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming out for illustrators and designers. Thanks for watching.